Welcome back to Fateen TV, speaking to the issues shaping our nation. And today we're discussing growing pressure on the natural health products industry in Canada and how this could affect Canadians' medical options with constitutional lawyer Sean Buckley and industry executive David Stefan. We've seen what Health Canada has been wanting to do to the industry, extraordinary powers to basically just come in and shut down the natural health industry if a particular party in that industry was deemed to be out of line. Because Health Canada is moving for full harmonization with the chemical drugs, Health Canada is imposing the fees that the chemical drug companies pay, and they're quite significant fees. So they're going to drive a lot of companies out of business. We're already experiencing censorship of truthful health information, but now that that's being expanded where we're actually going to have a whole army of Health Canada inspectors going out and making sure that no one can share truthful health information. On June 22nd, the Parliament of Canada passed C-47, an act to implement certain provisions of the budget. According to the Natural Health Products Protection Association, and I quote, Health Canada is imposing new fees on natural health businesses that will drive many small and medium-sized ones out of business. Their products will be gone. Health Canada is also imposing stricter regulations on natural products that will be costly for natural health companies to comply with. This will also drive natural health companies out of business. Their products will be gone. For the products that survive, the prices will increase because the producers will have to pass on their increased costs to the consumer. This takes the remaining products away from the poor and disadvantaged who cannot afford higher prices. Five million dollar a day fines have just been imposed on the natural health community. Your local health food store cannot survive a $5 million fine, and your local health practitioner, such as a naturopathic doctor, cannot survive a $5 million fine. Unquote. At a time when healthcare across our nation is under strain, most Canadians would agree that having more access to health and wellness products, not less, is the way we need to be going. Well, here today to discuss it are Sean Buckley, a constitutional lawyer who at one point actually represented Health Canada, but has since become one of the leading litigators against them and voices nationwide raising awareness on this issue. Joining him is David Stefan, the son of Tony. Stefan, a Canadian health products pioneer. David is also an executive of a Canadian food supplement company and also speaks on this issue. This is a discussion that many of you have actually called in and asked us to do a show on in recent weeks. So here it is. Let's get to it. All right, well, what an honor, Sean Buckley and David Stefan, two individuals who live and breathe this conversation that we are having today about natural health products in Canada, government revela uh, regulations, excuse me, and where this is all going. So thanks so much for joining me. Um, Sean, why don't we start with you, okay? Uh, just for our viewers, give us a real quick snapshot of your history in this and what just happened with C-47 in, uh, in Parliament. So, uh, Fatin, my history is, is in 1994, I uh, was at a firm that uh, Health Canada hired because a herbalist was suing Health Canada, that Health Canada had seized some herbs this herbalist was importing. And so I acted for Health Canada against this herbalist. And then the following year, I had started my own firm and Health Canada, in an attempt to shut this herbalist down, convinced the College of Physicians and Surgeons of British Columbia to charge him with practicing medicine without a license, and he hired me to defend him. When I was acting for Health Canada against this gentleman, Health Canada was telling me, isn't it dangerous that we basically have, in their terms, was rogue herbalist who is selling a treatment for a serious health condition, which was heart disease, and, you know, so people are going to be fooled and they're going to delay putting off, you know, proper treatment. And I bought into it. I believed it. But then when I was acting for him, I actually learned 
that the truth was the opposite. On the day of trial, I had five middle-class professional witnesses that I just picked for credibility that had all had heart disease. Two of them were too weak to survive the surgery, so they weren't eligible and were sent home to die. And the other three were not willing to go through that surgery again just to buy another year or two of life. So for them, the, the medical system was a dead end. The approved treatments was a dead end. They all come across these heart drops. They all get well. They're all working full time at the time of trial. All of them had been disabled for years, one of them for over a decade. And, uh, and you can't fake that. You can't fake working full time and being disabled. So <clears throat> that kind of convinced me actually that what Health Canada had told me when I was acting for them was completely wrong. That the reality was is the danger is saying to Canadians that they don't have a right to choose how they're going to treat themselves. And the danger is, is corralling us all into this chemical drug model, which is what David and I are here to talk about, is Health Canada is taking steps to corral us into this uh, one model so that we won't have the right to choose things like these heart drops or other natural remedies. And our natural health practitioners, your naturopathic doctors, your homeopaths, your traditional Chinese practitioners, they won't have the products anymore. This is like full on <clears throat> assault on our right to choose how we're going to treat ourselves, where we're basically being told we only have we only have one option. This is such a massive conversation, especially considering the fact that our healthcare systems across the board in our nation are failing Canadians, right? And so to eliminate an alternative that could possibly save lives, it just seems egregious. So I want, I want to bring you in here, David, because you guys have both been speaking out about the harmful impacts of C-47, but this is also part of a, a larger strategy, it would seem. Uh, share for Canadians what happened with C-47 and what your primary concerns are. David, why don't you weigh in first on that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we have a long history with Health Canada, um, True Hope Nutritional Support Limited does, where in October of 2000, the first study came to light showing uh, the significant impact that our Empower Plus was having on bipolar. And Health Canada came in literally the next day after the, uh, the study made national news. And Health Canada came in, they shut down a double-blind placebo-controlled trial that was funded by the Alberta government by over half a million dollars. So we, we got to see what Health Canada was up to at that point in time. And then when we fast forward eight years, we find ourselves, you know, the across the country, there's protests in every major city surrounding a bill called Bill C-51 that in essence was the same, same thing as Bill C-47 that just passed, wherein it was granting Health Canada extraordinary powers to basically just come in and uh, shut down the natural health industry if uh, a particular party in that industry was deemed to be out of line uh, with significant fines. And so we've seen what Health Canada has been wanting to do to the industry. We've spent 10 years in the courts with Health Canada um, battling it out just to even have an existence here in Canada to have natural products that would help people with mental health conditions where the drugs were failing. And yet Health Canada would try to shut down the science. They would try to suppress us. In fact, at one point in time, they told my dad, you know, if you want to continue doing this here in Canada, perhaps you just want to move south of the border. As if Canadians weren't deserving of a Canadian discovery that could largely benefit their lives. And so there's some serious things to be concerned about with the granting of these extraordinary powers to Health Canada because they've already abused those powers to the point that they've caused deaths uh, within Canada, and that was testified in one of the court proceedings um, back in 2005 that Sean can talk to as well as, as he was representing True Hope at that time. I think it's important for your viewers to understand that Canada and the, and the United States are 100% opposite. So in the 1990s, both Health Canada and the FDA in the, in the United States started restricting access to natural health products trying to um, corral them into a chemical drug model and impose chemical drug regulations on them. And so we have these two rebellions. And both rebellions were so large that governments were forced to look at it. So in the U.S., the Congress, they had a really hard look at, you know, how should we regulate natural health products? And out of that came legislation called the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, where by law, natural health products in the United States are, 
are classed as foods and by law they're deemed to be safe. So there's a legal presumption of safety, which Congress put into law when they looked at the safety profile. I mean, I can't point to a single death caused by a natural health product in all of Canadian history. And yet, you know, a simple over-the-counter medication like Tylenol kills at least 40 of us a year taken as directed, like just by way of comparison. The, you, you know, you're 14 times more likely to be struck by lightning than, than killed by a natural health product. So, <clears throat> I mean, to say they're risky is crazy. Well, in Canada, we have the citizen rebellion and we do the opposite. And, you know, the crazy thing is, is again, our government was forced to look at it. The Standing Committee of Health was asked by then Health Minister Alan Rock in uh, 1998 to look into how should we regulate these products. And the Standing Committee of Health had the broadest consultations of any parliamentary committee in Canadian history and came out with recommendations. And they were clear, you don't regulate these like chemical drugs. You have to, the whole model is the same. Let's not pretend they're dangerous. And Canadians want increased access. And that's, that's really important to understand. So we wanted increased access. But if you start over-regulating, you lose access, which is what happens. So Health Canada moved us into the chemical drug model. They're presumed to be dangerous. They're classed as drugs. Health Canada can take them off the market for any reason. In fact, Health Canada doesn't even have to let a product on the market. You have to get their permission. So I think it's important for people to understand that our whole model is designed to take these products away from us. And we used to be completely unregulated. Like it's only probably within the last 10 years that, you know, most of our products became regulated and we didn't feel unsafe before. And now they're, they're basically finishing the job, moving us into a full chemical model, and we're going to lose most of our products. Okay. And so this full chemical model, um, you know, increasing regulation to the point that some people just aren't, some, some businesses, some products just aren't going to be able to bear up under this. So what does this mean practically? Does it just mean that Canadians will have less variety in their, in their choices when it comes to homeopathic remedies? Uh, will it mean the shutdown of small businesses, medium sized businesses that specialize in this domain? What, what's the practical outflow of what just happened with C47? We're still going to have vitamins and minerals on the shelves. They will be in, in reduced amounts where they're, if you follow the label, they're really going to be meaningless. Um, <clears throat> but they'll still be there for political reasons. We won't have health food stores except the odd one in the largest of cities. And under this new licensing regime, the only products that can be licensed are those for which you would not seek the advice of a healthcare practitioner. So literally over the counter where you don't seek any advice. So, you know, you want a pain reliever, you go and you grab white willow bark or, or Tylenol. Um, but if it's for a condition for which you would seek the advice of a healthcare practitioner, so, and not just a medical doctor, a naturopath, homeopathic doctor, then you can't be licensed under this scheme. And you have to go, the only other pathway for you to be licensed is called the new drug approval process. You can't, you can't get through that if you're a natural health product. Like it's, it's not designed for natural health products. And the average cost is about a billion dollars. Well, natural health products don't have intellectual property rights. So the, the reality is, is, is this is the end of the industry. This is the end of your ability to choose anything but a chemical pharmaceutical drug. Yeah, exactly. So David, how does this affect the company that you represent? Well, it's already impacted us where we've had to make significant changes to our website. Um, you see, there's 35 medical journal publications uh, from universities around the world on the Empower Plus. And yet, recently, back in early June, we had to remove those from our website where no longer does the general public have access to looking at those medical journal publications because Health Canada didn't approve them, right? The information that was in them where they talk about, you know, helping ADHD or anxiety or depression or psychosis or even PMS. Health Canada didn't approve those studies. They didn't approve the content found in the studies. And as such, they came in and said, you need to remove those. You need to remove a few of your testimonials. And these are testimonials from real live people that have had success. And we've merely shared them on our website to, you know, really provide meaningful hope to those that are struggling with those same ailments. And so we're already having to revise things. But if, if they start to exercise these extraordinary powers, they're not just going to come in 
and say, hey, you know, with a threat that we're going to remove your license, it's going to be a, a hefty fine, a fine that isn't affordable to the average company out there that's trying to just help the general public in Canada. And so it, there's a huge threat there. But going back to what you talked about, like, what will we see from this, you know, reduced variety of products, you can't get the same amount of products, not even close as what you could have 15 years ago if you went into a health food store. And the reason for that was the subtle and slow clamping down of the NPN regulations that they had enacted back in January of 2004, they finally began to tighten things down more around uh, 2010. And that's when we saw a lot of these US-based companies saying, we're not going to jump through these hoops. It's not worth it for us to jump through the hoops financially for such a small demographic when we have 10 times the demographic available to us in the US. And we can go into other countries as well where um, it's not as stringent to, to make the products available. So we've already lost, the Canadians have already lost a significant amount of products that they once had available to them. And as Sean says, this is just kind of like, you know, the final blow that's going to really knock the industry out. So we'll legalize crystal meth and heroin and cocaine, but we'll criminalize, you know, garlic and oregano oil and bring in strict new penalties. It's the new war on drugs. We love Canada and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit Fayteen.tv or call 1-866-844-0844 to donate today. You know, and when it comes to just Canadians and medical choice, medical options uh, for treatment, this is just, it sounds like such a massive disservice to our nation. And, you know, I really think people are just starting to wake up. You know, we have people that email us on a regular basis saying, hey, can you talk about this topic, that topic? This particular issue has only been, uh, we've only had people emailing us really in about the last month and a half saying, hey, will you do a show on this? And so um, is that part of where we're at right now? Just Canadians needing to wake up. And for those that are waking up to what's happening here with this dynamic, what should they do? So it, on the waking up part, I mean, this this is a fairly new issue. Prior to Bill C-47, True Hope's risk of, you know, defying Health Canada, because Health Canada takes the position that you cannot share truthful health information. We're not talking about fraud. There's protection in the Food and Drug Act against fraud. There's protection in the Criminal Code against fraud. There's protection in our Telecommunications Acts against fraud. There's about three different, you know, enforcement bodies that protect us against fraud. We're talking about truthful health information. And Health Canada takes the position that all that is able to be said publicly is the label claim. You have to get their permission to sell. Now, Fatine, that doesn't tell you that this product, you know, if, you were, if you've got, you know, a child with severe bipolar disorder who's getting involuntarily committed to psych wards and is a, in a cohort where it's a death sentence, they're not going to be here in five years, that type of information does not tell you that this might be the product that saves your child's life. And so <clears throat> if we are censored, we can't, we, you know, then we can't find out. Even if a product somehow survives this massacre that's coming, well, if you don't know it's going to help you for something, it's useless. It's another tool. But before um, June 22nd, when Bill C-47 passed, Truop was facing a maximum fine of $5,000 per offense. As of June 22nd, it's $5 million per day of violation. And it doesn't matter that there's a company. The company can be charged and subject to these $5 million day fines. But every director, officer, and employee who even you know participates in any way or even acquiesces, whatever that's going to mean in this context. So like the web guy that that posts the link is liable to five million dollar a day fines. So now for the first time in Canadian history, like as long as these studies have existed, Canadians can't access them. And then so what else also happening? Because Health Canada is moving for full harmonization with the chemical drugs, 
is Health Canada is imposing the fees that the chemical drug companies pay for product licensing and site licensing and that. They're yearly fees. And they're quite significant fees. So they're going to drive a lot of companies out of business. So we're going to lose their products. <clears throat> but Health Canada is saying, well, you know, we're going to use these funds to hire more inspectors, the, you know, the Health Canada police, so, you know, we're already experiencing censorship of truthful health information, you know, with other social media platforms and, and people being deplatformed for if you ever go against the government narrative. But now that's being expanded where we're actually going to have a whole army of Health Canada inspectors. The less natural health product uh, variety and choice for Canadians and more bureaucracy. <laughs> it's just, I, I don't think this is dr the direction that most uh, Canadians are shaking pom-poms over right now. So, wow, so eye-opening, you guys. Um, now, we're starting to close in on our time here just for, our, for the television program. Um, what do Canadians do? If they want to find out more, they want to be a voice, they want to dialogue with our leaders here, or maybe they just want information. Like, I'm sitting here listening to you guys thinking, like, what's the real agenda here? Like, it just seems so counterintuitive intuitive what's happening if you truly value the health and well-being of Canadians. Where do we go from here, guys? Why don't you go first, David? Well, you know, there, there's a point here, a principle to, you know, it's not um, enough to be, uh, to, to awaken to the situation. We actually have to put our boots to the ground and, and do something about it. And Sean has, has really uh, developed a great platform um, to help channel people, their, their energy, their, mm -hmm. Their distrust in the government as to what they're doing right now in relation to the natural health industry, which seems to make no sense unless there's some kind of nefarious agenda behind the scenes. Um, Sean's really put together a great uh, platform there to assist people in, in taking meaningful action rather than just being awake to it and, and awakening others, which does nothing unless there's actual action to back it. Um, but, you know, Canadians need to not just be awakened to the situation, but they, they need to start moving. They, if they want access to these life-saving natural health products, which many people rely on, right, either for preventative medicine or even for dealing with an acute um, situation that's literally life-threatening. And so they need to stand up and, and protect their rights to that because we've seen what happens in Europe. We've seen what happens in Australia and all those other countries that have really taken on this model, you know, back in the 80s and 90s where they, you know, their people just don't have access to these types of supplements unless it's doctor recommended. The world's changing so much right now. So we're losing our right to natural health products. We're going to find ourselves in a model where, you know, Canada doesn't even have sovereignty over how it manages the next pandemic and the World Health Organization will dictate how we're going to treat ourselves. We're harmonizing our drug regulations internationally. Um, we're really our focus is more on harmonization rather than what Canadians want and rather what's, you know, what's good for health outcomes. We're losing control over our food supply. <clears throat> we're going to find ourselves literally in a cage that we're really going to regret. We're in an information war where the government is doing a whole bunch of things because people don't understand and those that understand are not taking action. So likely your audience is, you know, what we would call awake. They understand that things are amiss, but you have to take action now. And so we're actually, you know, wanting to create initiatives even to make Parliament responsive, not just on the natural health product issue, but other issues. So I would really invite your audience, nhppa.org, and that uh, just stands for the Natural Health Product Protection Association. It's a nonprofit organization that I'm involved with that is just there to protect our, our health rights. And so we've written a discussion paper. It's about 35 pages long. It's written for the industry, so it's, it's a little technical, but it's understandable. And that will give you, you will understand the issues when you've read that paper. And there's also a two-pager just so <clears throat> if you don't want to go through 35 pages, it's like, okay, well, here's what's happening. Um, in a very easy format. We've also right now got a campaign that you can participate in to put pressure on your MPs. Our first step is, is to wake all the MPs up to what's going on and that we're unhappy about it and we want specific change. And the change we want is 
let's get out of this chemical drug model and do what the United States did and do what we used to do. We weren't regulated as drugs before. And um, it, it, this is only a recent thing. So the, the first problem is, is that we've allowed Health Canada to move us halfway into a chemical drug model. Well, we, we need to move back into a food model. And um, the second thing that we need to do is we need to enact the Charter of Health Freedom. And you just Google Charter, Charter of Health Freedom, but it has its own site, charterofhealthfreedom.org. So it just sets out the rights the courts already say we have. It moves these into a food category and it, it takes them away from Health Canada regulation. You know, if I can just indicate how strange this is what's happening. So in British Columbia, we have legalized or decriminalized, same thing. So we've legalized hard drugs <clears throat> like cocaine, heroin, crystal meth. So you can sell or traffic those drugs and you're not going to face any fine at all. But, you know, if you're selling or trafficking illegal garlic or oregano oil, you are now facing a $5 million fine. It's the new war on drugs, Health Canada's new war on drugs. So we'll legalize crystal meth and heroin and cocaine, but we'll criminalize, you know, garlic and oregano oil and bring in strict new penalties. So it's crazy. But on the NHPPA site, there's a place where you can subscribe. So there's a contact tab. Give us your email address. And then that allows you when we launch a campaign, you know, to take action that you can participate. Wonderful. Well, wonderful. Well, to say this has been eye-opening, I think would be an understatement. And, uh, you know, we need to have you guys back on or some of your colleagues to talk about that charter as well. So we'll be watching this. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to staying in touch. Thanks for joining me once again this week. Your presence and engagement on these important discussions for our nation are always so appreciated. And if you appreciated today's show and want to watch it again or share it with your loved ones, simply go to fateen.tv to find this program as well as other previous episodes, which can be viewed there at any time. If you want to see these shows continue on air, we would so appreciate your support so that we can keep at it. We say it every week, but it's worth mentioning again as a nonprofit TV show Show, we are able to stay on air because of the generous gifts of our monthly partners and our regular donors. And you're the ones that make all of this happen. So if you'd like to become a monthly partner or give a special gift today, we would be so grateful. Everyone makes a huge difference. Simply visit fateen.tv to give securely online or give our team a call at 1-866-844-0844. And someone would be honored to take your call and even pray for your personal prayer needs. Lastly, don't forget that we have a few ways you can ensure that you never miss a show. Sign up for our email list at fateen.tv or download our smartphone app. And when you do either of those, you will be notified every time a new show is released so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for joining me. Hope to see you next week. Until then, take care and God bless. One person is a voice, but together we are a powerful force that can do so much good. Thank you for your support of Fateen TV and thank you for being a part of this team. Together, we truly can lead the world better for the sake of future generations. We appreciate you and every gift really makes a difference.